Hello everyone, welcome to another Words in the World Psychopy 3 tutorial. Uh, in this experiment, I'm going to be showing you how to make online experiments that have auditory stimuli. And it's going to be pretty straightforward. Uh, all we're going to do is we're going to add our stimuli into an auditory lexical decision task, and then we're going to test it online. So this should be a pretty, uh, pretty short video. So if we go over into Psychopy 3, I've already created um, our lexical decision task. So I've got a welcome screen, I've got instructions, and then I've got my trial loop with fixation and the lexical decision task itself. So I've already created my response. So I'm just going to look for these A and L keys only. I'm going to store the response time and the key that was pressed. And I've got my uh, correct answer already included in my stimulus file. I'm just going to load my stimulus file again here. So I can see that I've got four conditions and I've got three uh, parameters. So I've got my target, my condition, and my correct. Now if I go and look at that, that um, this is the folder here. So inside the folder for this experiment, I've got uh, the audio demo uh, psychopi file. I, ha I have my, uh, my auditory stimuli that I just quickly uh, synthesized using um, the read aloud function in Microsoft Word and uh, Audacity. And I've got my stimulus file here. So let's go ahead and look inside my stimulus file. All right, so here, those are my three, con uh, my three parameters. I've got um, my target, my condition, and the correct. So I've got two words, salmon and opera, and I've got two no uh, non-words, dharmic and gelad. Now, what I have to do now is I have to kind of somehow include my auditory um, stimuli into the stimulus folder. So if I go back, let's just quickly uh, check to make sure these work. Opera. Sounds good to me. Gelad. Great. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new folder. Now you have to make sure that your stimuli are inside the experiment folder. Otherwise, Psychopy won't be able to find them. So I'll call this audio. Uh, I'll call this audio files. No, I'll call it something better. I'll call it sound files. Sounds good to me. So I'm going to put all of my auditory stimuli into that folder. So now the way that I'm going to show Psychopy um, what stimuli I want it to play is by providing it with a, a relative file path. So I want to be able to basically guide uh, PsychoPy to the location of these folders, uh, these files, sorry. So if I go inside this folder and go to properties, it's going to show me the file path or its location. Now this is its absolute file path, but I don't need uh, all of this information because PsychoPy already knows to look inside this folder. So all I need is this, the actual folder that the uh, files are in, then the name, which should be up here, and then dot .wav. So that should be all the information I need to provide. So let's go into my stimulus folder and add that in. So I'll call this um, audio stim. Actually, let's, let's just make it, let's just call it file path. Now the file path is going to be first sound files. Sound files. I'm going to use a forward slash, and then I want the name. This should be salmon dot wave. Perfect. So this is going to this is all the information I need to provide. Now just to save a little bit of time, because often you'll have hundreds of. Uh, of stimuli that you need to create file paths for. You can just use the concatenate function in, uh, in Excel and we're going to uh, just add a string that says sound files forward slash. Then we want to include the name of the file which I've always made equal to the target and then we're going to add a dot wave at the end. Cool. So that, that little function should uh, generate the uh, correct file path for all of my stimuli. Alright, so 
sure this is all good. I'll make sure this is saved and I'll exit out of here. Now I can go back in. I'll load this again. And I should have, great. So now I have four, four parameters. So I've got this file path. So remember, for each trial, um, Cyclepy is going to load a different row of uh, this conditions file. And it's going to make this variable file path equal to uh, the file path that I provided in, in, that whole, in that file. So I can now use that. So when I create my uh, sound, uh, sound stimuli, I can just call it auditory stim. Um, so I can set, the start time should be at the beginning of the trial, that's obvious. Um, but then I can set different stop times, but I just want to make sure that the entire file plays. So I'm if I leave this blank, um, essentially this audio uh, stim will end as soon as the audio file does. Now for sound, I want to make this equal to a variable, and that's going to be equal to the variable file path. I can also adjust the volume, that doesn't matter to me. Um, I want to make sure this is synced, so it will record the uh, onset and offset times, and that's fine. So this should be everything that I need, and I just make, need to make sure that this sets every repeat, so that the uh, value of this variable will change every time we enter a new row in the conditions file. Looks good to me. Perfect. So one other thing that I want to do, I'm going to go into the experiment settings. So you can see that I've created a bunch of different uh, questions here. We'll go over these when I actually load the experiment online. Now, here, I, I really want to make sure that the um, audio stimuli are presented at precisely the beginning of the uh, trial. Because, for example, if, if they're presented 30 to 60 milliseconds late, uh, that's going to negatively affect uh, the precision of my response variable. I want to make sure that all of these stimuli are presented at exactly the same time. So I'm going to uh, go here and I want to make sure that this uh, late, I want to make sure I tell PsychoPy that the latency of my auditory stimuli is critical. And I want to use the newest aud aud audio library. So the way that PsychoPy works is that it doesn't actually manage any of the sound files itself in PsychoPy. It uses uh, different backend programs. Uh, these are all a bit older. These are older iterations. This is the newest and most precise iteration of the audio backend that they're using. So I'm going to use PCD. Everything else, um, this, uh, none of this really matters. Uh, leave this out. That's fine. So that's uh, the most important thing to change. So again, it's just in the experiment settings under audio. So you want to have latency is critical and use this PCD library. That's the best available one. Great. Okay, so this seems all ready to go. So I'm going to sync this. Um, I'm going to create my project and sync it to the repository online on Pavlovia. So create my project. So I want this to be called audio demo. I'm the owner. And I'll just say um, demo auditory lexical decision task. And again, I want to make this public. Um, that means that if uh, you're ever curious, you could go on to Pavlovia, search for this audio demo um, experiment. And you can then view all of the uh, code, all of the files that are associated with it in the repository. So I'll go ahead and create this. And then it's going to ask me to provide some information about this commit. So it's like nine new files. Sounds good to me. I'm just going to call this first commit created auditory lexical decision task. So if I go into my folder now, I can see my new files. I've got my git folder, I've got my git ignore text file, and I've got my HTML folder. So if I look at this, I've got my HTML, I've got my JavaScript code, and I've, in my resources, now this is empty. So again, this is one of the bugs with the current version of PsychoPy. Um, if you 
when you create your experiment, for some reason it doesn't detect the uh, conditions file that you've already loaded. So I'm going to load it in again. Let's go in, load my sim new file. OK, and I'll save and I'll sync this. It's going to ask me to provide some information about what's changed in the commit. And I added the sim. Okay, so now if I go back to this resources file, a folder, uh, I can see I've got a new folder and a new file. So it's uploaded the stim, but it's also um, detected the files that the uh, conditions uh, file is pointing to, and it's uploaded those as well. So if I look inside here, I have all of the fo uh, files that um, my file paths were pointing to in the, uh, in, inside uh, this folder. So you can see now I have my sound files here, but I also have them uploaded here in my resources folder. And these are the ones that uh, PsychoPy will actually use once it's uploaded. OK, so now let's see if this is actually going to work. So I'm on Pavlovia. I'm already signed in. So I just go to my dashboard. And I'm going to go into my experiments. This should be close to the top, audio demo. And so before anything, let's just have a look inside the repository. And we can see that everything is in here. So I've got my sim, I've got my HTML file, I've got my resources, and inside the resources I've got my sound file for my stimuli. So that looks all good. So let's switch this over to piloting and see if it works. Great. All right, so here these are the uh, questions that I'm deciding to ask. So I'll get age, I'll ask them if, I've, uh, if they have any hearing impairments, and they say no. Now, I'm going to ask them as many times uh, and remind them as many times as I can uh, to make sure that they're wearing headphones. Uh, that's pretty critical for these kind of experiments. Um, and again, we don't have any control. We can't reach through the computer and uh, force our uh, participants to wear headphones. But we can kind of gently remind them as many times as we can to try and encourage them to, uh, to do that. So again, asking the question kind of adds this, ability, this, uh, this kind of sense of... Uh, accountability. I'm also going to ask them where they're doing the experiment. So I'm in an office right now. And I'll ask them to rate uh, how noisy their current environment is from 1 to 10. So my current environment maybe is about a 1 or a 2, maybe I'll say 2. Got a little bit of background humming. And here I can see that all of the audio uh, files were, have already been loaded. So this is the reason why uh, internet connection shouldn't, uh, shouldn't matter. If you have a slow internet connection, it might take a long time to load all of the, the stimulus files for a longer experiment, but it does all of this beforehand. And so all it's doing during the experiment is just accessing those files that are already uploaded to this website. So let's get started. So now I've got my welcome message. I'm just going to thank them for participating. I'm going to remind them that they can exit any time by pressing the escape button twice. And then I'm going to do some more reminding uh, some more gent gent gentle prodding. <laughs> so I'm going to remind them that it requires headphones, and please put them on right now. And I'm also going to um, remind them uh, to try and reduce any background noise. So hopefully if they're like listening to music in the background, once they read this, they'll decide, oh, maybe it's not a good idea, and they can just go out and close it uh, to close those files, uh, to close those other windows, or turn off their music and then they can maybe start the experiment again or continue in non-full screen mode. Then we'll go to our instructions, pretty straightforward. And let's see if these are working. Gel lag. Okay, non-word, so I'll press L. Darmok. So here I'll intentionally make a mistake, so I'll press A, saying this is the real word. Salmon. Real word, I'll press A. Opera. Opera, that's the real word, I'll press A again. Okay, so now it's going to automatically save my data. If I go down here, open up the data file. So again, it's, it's pi because it's piloting, it's going to save um, my file just local, uh, just into the browser, rather than into the repository. Okay, so I can 
what is this? Okay, let's have a look here. Ah, so uh, I, I forgot that I loaded this again. And uh, so, okay. So here we go, this is um, my instruction uh, key. So I press space. It shows that I spent four seconds reading the instructions. These are my responses. So these are whether they're correct or not. So you can see that I, when I intentionally made a mistake here, that it's giving me a score of zero. And this is how much time it took me to respond in each of those trials. Uh, this trial information is not very useful. This tells you how many times I went through the loop, how many conditions were in the loop. Um, this is just the order from the original, uh, uh, original file. So here we can see all the information that was included in my conditions file, the target condition correct and the, and the file path. And then here, uh, because I didn't uh, fill this out the second time around, this is all empty. But I've got the date, the experiment name, the version, and it's detected the frame rate of my um, computer during the experiment and also my operating system. Okay, I'm going to save this. Looks good. Okay, so I think uh, we succeeded in uh, adding some auditory stimuli to our lexical decision task using Cycle by 3. We tested it online, it worked perfectly, and we had a look at the, uh, at the data output. All right, well, thank, that's it. Thank you very much for uh, tuning in. And again, if you have any further questions or requests, uh, please just uh, send me an email. I'd be happy to help you out in any way that I can. Um, yeah, well, that's it. Thanks again, and stay safe.